it'll start in about 10 minutes. Do you have some official for welcoming? Uh, uh, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Major. Uh, in, a, uh, in a starting phase or no, 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 the second phase? I believe it will be another phase. Most likely, no. <laughs> Most likely, no secondary briefing. We're probably going to go up directly now. No, 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 but you would like to do local officials. No, 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 no. no we, don't, uh, we don't provide. The, uh, we don't have any. Don't have uh, No support from the local municipality. Ah, sorry, you are live stream. <laughs> I don't care. It would have been awkward if there was support and I say it's nothing. Yes. But it's nothing, it's nothing, it's yes. easy. You, you can say. <laughs>
alebo preklad z angličtiny do češtiny alebo slovenčiny, akokoľvek tomu hovoríte, nebude poskytnutý. Musíte sa spýtať svojich kamošov, oni vám poskytnú preklad, prípadne prídite za mnou, ale bez záruky. OK, then sponsors. I would like to mention the sponsors the here. Oh. Skynomad, uh, Svez Paraglidingu České republiky, Meteo Blue, Drift, Liv Sopot, Fidox, uh, Meatfly and Ozone. Okay, that's all. Today we have a tra uh, we had a training task. Uh, results will be tomorrow, most probably maybe in the morning, maybe later, we will see. Uh, most requested uh, request, we will open new category, seniors. Okay. Uh, internet on, on landing field uh, or camping site will be provided by Starlink. Uh, check for the Elon Club car when it's there, then the internet might be there as well. 
and everything else I will handle to to Ivo. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you everyone for making Sopot a live place again for two long years of COVID. We're seeing the paragliding scene waking up again and we are very, very happy to have so many pilots again in Sopot again for the competition. Very happy to see so many old and new faces. And we are really hoping that we're going to have one very good week. I'll start with the good news. The forecast looks nice. Uh, and I'll stop there because we don't want to jinx it. <clears throat> of course, we have to do this mandatory safety as usual, plus we have to def uh, explain a few things about organization. First and foremost, we want to provide you with good service and to have a good comp. However, remember that we're all in this, so we also need your cooperation, which I'll be explaining. You've already met most of the team. Uh, you met Daniel, who will be our scoring official. Uh, <clears throat> I'm the meet director for the comp. My name is Ivo. If we haven't met, you'll meet me during the week. We'll, have, we'll start with a few uh, requests and a few explanations for the people camping at the chairlift site and the uh, field. Unfortunately, we weren't able to provide uh, electricity because we're in a bit of a difficult political situation with the landing field. Uh, the owner of the landing field uh, has requested for us not to try to cut the grass or anything like that. Again, it's a bit of a complex situation, so I would just uh, ask you for an understanding and do the best with what we have. Uh, <clears throat> the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about are mostly related to uh, the standard procedures for every day, and we're going to review also the Sopot locality, the flying area, get you familiar with that if you have not flown here. Uh, for most of you, I'm pretty sure Sopot is a very familiar place. I see, again, lots of familiar faces, which makes me very happy. So, we're going to start with uh, some of the basic things. First of all, uh, I want to set up the chairlift rules provided by us by the chairlift owner, which are also our sponsors that provide the transport to take off for us every day. Tomorrow morning, uh, the uh, on the chairlift, you will also be able to taste the local production of the Rosin Organic Farm. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock there will be a uh, complimentary breakfast uh, of traditional Bulgarian food on the chairlift before ascending. Nice. Uh, but we'll mention that also further on during the program. As far as the chairlift usage comes, first of all, uh, we have to know that uh, you have to know that the chairlift in Sopot is not like a ski lift. It doesn't slow down on your ascent. For those of you who have flown here before, know that you get a good hit in the butt going on the chairlift and you have to jump on top and throw your equipment to one side. The chairlift is not responsible for your equipment. Uh, they can help you if you ask for help, but they will not help you by default. So please, if you want help on getting on and off the chairlift, make note. Uh, Raise your hand before getting off the chairlift, and this is a sign for the chairlift people to help you. But I advise you, if you're capable, manage your own equipment getting on and off the chairlift. Again, the chairlift people do not take any responsibility for uh, equipment. Be careful when putting your backpacks on the chairlift seats because straps and other loose things can get caught in the chairlift seat. And on top, you jump off and your backpack starts going back down without you in the worst case scenario. So be careful, be cautious. If you need help, make yourself noticed, raise your hand, chairlift guys will help you. But if you don't, they will not help you by default. Another good thing to mention, uh, people will be monitored on ascending the chairlift. We will not allow people who are not sober to get on the chairlift and you will not be allowed to fly the day. So make sure you cut the alcohol usage early enough the night before. Uh, but I trust you can manage that. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing specific in regards to the chairlift usage. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask any of us or the chairlift people. They're quite helpful with most things, but they won't give you an accurate forecast. Uh, announcements and briefings for the comp uh, will be announced uh, mostly on the Telegram channel. You've already had the chance to scan the QR code that adds you to the Telegram channel. We have 
a channel and a chat group. The chat group will be used for report backs and general discussions. While on the channel, only the organizers will be publishing information. That will be official information. Uh, so monitor the official channel for notifications, for briefings, uh, or procedures in general. Every morning, we'll be giving a very rough forecast for the, for the day and, again, a daily program. Uh, so, again, monitor the channel for official information. Uh, we're going to review the SOPOT area, for those of you who haven't flown here. So, SOPOT in general is situated in the central part on our main mountain range that runs east to west. Sopot is a moderately high takeoff with an altitude of about 1450 meters above sea level. And we are having a playground of mountains up to 2000, even 2000, almost 2500 meters, which is the highest peak in our area. Sopot takeoff has three distinguishable takeoff sites. The biggest phase of Sopot takeoff is southerly. Uh, which takes winds mostly from southeast to southwest. We also have an area for taking off straight into east winds and a very limited area for taking off in west winds. In general, at Sopot takeoff, it's recommended to use a higher launch point, avoid, landing, uh, avoid taking off at the lower part of the takeoff because uh, you will notice the characterizing two ridges on left and right, and naturally in crosswind situations, those can create turbulence. Be very cautious, especially with westerly winds. Uh, Takeoff will naturally be announced uh, every day on briefing, and we'll be usually having the briefing on the south launch. And, of course, there will be a preferred takeoff or recommended takeoff every day, depending on conditions. Uh, other than that, Sopo takeoff is a fairly nice place. Uh, keep in mind, in crosswind situations, there is also a significant possibility for dust devils to start from the takeoff. For that reason, again, I would recommend pilots to use higher places for launching. Usually the dust devils on takeoff are starting from the lowest part of the takeoff. That gives you enough time to react if you see one, but if you're spread it exactly in that area, you might not have enough time. Again, we'll notify you on the days where dust devils might be more, more uh, probable on takeoff. Uh, Starting off from takeoff, we are flying in a mountain range that is separated into two main ridges. In Sopot, we have the main mountain ridge, uh, the central ridge, which is quite deep into the mountain range and fairly rare to fly. We usually fly this range only if cloud base is up to 3,000 meters, which unfortunately is not expected. However, we are expecting cloud bases of around 2,500 this week, so you'll be able to see it, but I would not recommend taking routes on it, because if you land there, you're up for a five-hour walk. Most of the times, whenever we're flying the mountains, we're flying the front ridges of the mountain, uh, which are fairly steep, very easy to exit. But keep in mind, it is still a high mountain place, it's cut through some very big gorges, biggest one of which is approximately five kilometers east of launch. If you haven't flown mountains, be careful when crossing the gorges, always make sure you have enough height to cross, avoid crossing at the widest parts, or circle out in the front where the gorges are narrow, because you can get caught in them, there is significant venturi going through them sometimes, and significant suction above them. So be cautious, and use common sense. Uh, most of the times, when we task in the area, we are flying, usually in the first part of the day, along the mountain range to the east and west, there are a few areas which you need to know about. Closest one to us and the one we need to avoid is the shooting range. There is a military shooting range approximately 2-3 kilometers east of launch. Uh, sorry, west of launch. The shooting range can be easily identified by these weird line shapes that you see on the ground. It technically has an airspace above it, so we would not recommend flying below 500 meters above ground level, above the shooting range. Landing in the shooting range is strictly prohibited. You'll make a lot of military guys unhappy, and they have guns. 
So, uh, shooting range is definitely forbidden for flying. It is allowed to fly over it, over 500 meters above ground level, it's okay. If you prefer to be safe, you can circle around the shooting range on the main road that runs east-west. Uh, or going through the mountain is always safe and usually the easier way to go, actually. Going to the west, we also have uh, our local gypsy village. Uh, this is practically the last village you see in the end of the valley. When you're looking from takeoff, you will notice one village that the road goes straight into. Uh, avoid landing close to the east part of the gypsy village. Uh, it just has a bit of an annoying gypsy community that will happily help you part with your belongings. Uh, landing on the west side of the village is fine, or if you find yourself landing near that village, just make sure you land far enough from the east end of the village. Continuing to the west, uh, we also have uh, about 3-4 kilometers after the village, after the gypsy village, you will see this uh, kind of weird cross-section on the road. And we'll notify you about those things if we have tasks to the west again. Uh, but after this cross-section close to the mountain, there is uh, a local wildlife farm. Uh, they have a bit of big animals there, which you don't want to meet. So please avoid landing in that area as well. Uh, however, <clears throat> there are plenty of safe landable options around that area. So again, you'll be notified when flying to the west about those dangers. Uh, in general, our playground to the west will be up to the, about 50 to 70 kilometers to the west. Uh, there's no specific areas after this one, or at least nothing we should watch out for. In about 70 kilometers to the west, we have Sofia airspace, which limits our uh, flights in that direction. Uh, other than that, the mountain is fairly safe and easy to fly. Plenty of landable options all along the mountain range, both east and west. Of course, apply natural caution, watch out for power lines and the usual stuff. Flying to the east, uh, we're having a fairly easy area again. Uh, the mountain is a bit more steep to the east, however, mind the big gorges again. Most of the times we're flying on the front slopes, this is usually where the good conditions are as well. In about 15 kilometers, you will notice that the two mountain ridges kind of combine into one. This transition is sometimes a little bit difficult, and this area can be slightly athermic. So if you land in this area, expect poor GSM reception. It is plenty of landable fields, there are good roads going to it, it's just that you're not going to be able to send a message where you are. If you land in this area, you have to climb a little bit higher on some of the hills to be able to send out a message. Uh, or just walk along the road until you get GSM reception. It's not a long walk, but it's a bit annoying. In this area, we don't have a very good GSM reception. This is exactly at the 20th kilometer east of launch, just at the base of the mountain. Continuing onward, uh, after the 25th kilometer, again, the mountain becomes very easy to fly, uh, with no specificness, plenty of landable areas, uh, plenty of easy routes to take. At about the 50 kilometer mark, we're running into a mountain pass, which is usually easy to fly. In case, however, we have northerly winds, you might expect a flush down of north winds to push you into the flatlands. Again, you'll be notified about those things depending on forecast and on tasks. Uh, we have the same situation to the west of us, about 10 to 15 kilometers away from us to the west, we also have a mountain pass which very often can create north winds. Those places are not usually turbulent or dangerous, but you just get flushed down to the ground if those effects appear. But again, we'll notify you for that on forecasts and depending on tasks. Uh, considering the time of year, we are also expecting possible overdevelopment during the week. Uh, the good thing about SOPOT, however, is that it's very predictable in regards to overdeveloping clouds. We have a few areas in which overdevelopment is observed, uh, and they tend to work like clockwork. Uh, most of them will be working always in consecutive runs. Usually the first and biggest thunderstorm will form southwest of us on the opposite mountain range from SOPOT. Uh, then these two will 
work depending on conditions. One is about 20 kilometer mark, exactly over that bad GSM reception area. And the other one is, again, 20 kilometers to the west, uh, where usually big clouds will form. Keep in mind, however, Sopot Valley allows for a lot of wiggle room, even with overdevelopment. Very often, the flatlands provide us with safe exit, especially to the southeast. So it's not uncommon to task here with fairly big clouds around, but naturally, we'll be reporting conditions and assessing every situation on the go. Uh, apart from those areas, you will see the local standard lift landing zone, which you've probably seen today, or you'll see it tomorrow ascending the chairlift, uh, and the various other landing zones we will be using as finish points during the week. But you get to hopefully see them while finishing. Uh, other than that, we have no other specific areas or no other specificness in the terrain. Uh, we are given a fairly good and wide uh, airspace for the competition, so we should be able to make some nice tasks in the area. But again, let's see what the weather will give us for the next days. Before I continue, do we have any questions in regards to the flying area or anything I've missed? Okay, I like silence. Let's continue then. Uh, so, just to summarize the things, be prepared to meet some northerly winds in some parts of the mountain. Uh, watch out for crosswinds on takeoff. Keep your eyes open for power lines on landings. Watch out for dust devils on takeoff. And mind the landing prohibited zones, especially. Reminding you about the flying rules, alcohol and other substances will be prohibited during the competition. And as I mentioned, people will be monitored on ascending the chairlift. I know we're here to party as well, but uh, be with a clear mind whenever you're flying. It's for your safety and the safety of others. Uh, so don't drink alcohol 12 hours before the task. The organizer might check, make, make alcohol checks and people will be prohibited from going on the chairlift if they are in not a good state. We're using the standard rules for thermal indirection. On odd dates, uh, we'll be turning left and on even dates, we'll be turning right around the takeoff area. This is for the first thermal before the start. And after start, of course, we apply standard rules. First one in the thermal says the thermal indirection. When flying, we'll be using the three-level system for reporting conditions. Uh, during the task, I or the safety committee will ask you to report conditions. Uh, when you hear a request for a report or when you feel like you need to give a report, you say your number and the level of the conditions and the position where you are. Uh, so, for example, pilot number eight, level one, 50 kilometers after start. Level 1 means conditions are okay and safe for flying according to your own feeling. Level 2 means conditions are turbulent but still flyable. And level 3 means conditions are dangerous. You are stopping the flying based on your decision. If we get a lot of reports for level 3, expect that there might be a stoppage of tasks. In case of a stop task, uh, we don't have team leaders, I guess, but if we do retransmit the message, in any case, it's good to retransmit the message if you hear the message of a stop task. Uh, make a descent maneuver suitable for your wing. If you can do big ears, do big ears. This shows other pilots around you that the task is stopped. If you are on a bladder that cannot do big ears, deploy your anti-G or start showing some kind of a descent maneuver. Uh, land safely as quickly as possible after a safe a stop task and report back immediately after landing. If we've stopped the task, there's a good reason for it, so we want to make sure that everyone is alright. There are a few things that we're not going to tolerate. First is aggressive flying. Uh, every pilot can give reports for aggressive flying and I encourage you to do so. Uh, so be gracious to other pilots around you, mind the rules of the air and generally try to fly safe for yourself and others around you. Cloud flying is also prohibited. In case of cloud flying, in place of cloud suction, if you get sent, you must show uh, by actions that you are in or out on task, but as soon as you're outside of the cloud, it's a high descent to below cloud base level. 
We will be checking track logs. If there are reports of pilots cloud flying, we will be checking uh, track logs. And if there is a proof that the pilot took advantage of his higher altitude, he'll be receiving zero points for the day. And on second infringement, it will be disqualification. Another thing we're very serious about, and we really ask you to take that to heart, is report back. Uh, we need to know that you're safe because there's a big team behind us. We have mountain rescue teams on site, we have doctors on site and so on. And these people will be waiting the whole day for you to finish with your fun. So after you're done flying and you've finished with the fun part, please report back in any case. If we find people failing to report back for not valid reasons, again, there will be penalties. Again, zero points for first infringement and disqualification for second. Tracking will be uh, done via, via the designated trackers provided by Flymaster. Trackers will be given to you on takeoff and you must bring back trackers to HQ for charging overnight. The trackers are your way of checking in and checking out. If we have not received a tracker from someone, we take it that he's probably not retrieved yet uh, or that person might have a problem and is lost. So, you get the trackers on takeoff and you return them every night to HQ for charging. So make sure you have acquired your tracker before taking off. Track logs and uh, scoring will be based on the tracker system. You don't see the color here. But, uh, so tracking will be provided by the trackers and also your track logs will be automatically downloaded from the tracking system and they will be used for the scoring. If by any chance you think that uh, something is wrong with the track log from the tracker uh, or you see that there was a problem, you have, uh, you want to your other alternative track logs to be reviewed, you can send the track logs to danieldimov at gmail.com. You don't see the at gmail.com part, sorry for that. Uh, but this is the email you can send track logs to. Uh, and you can check the live results at the following address, xcbnac.bg, event CBS 2022. I'll post that link also on the official channel when the first results come out. Again, if in case of a faulty check, present GPS for download of track log. Results will be, uh, will be, be provisional uh, almost immediately after task is finished. So we will start the automatic scoring and a uh, results will become official the next morning. So you have whole evening for complaints. Reporting back is mandatory for everyone. Uh, make sure you've checked in at the chairlift and that is you picking up the uh, tracker as we mentioned. You must report back in any case. Even if you have not flown today, if you were on takeoff, you decided you want to go down with the chairlift, you didn't like the conditions, still report back. Send us a message and say, NIM number, this one, doesn't need retrieve, did not fly today, going down with the chairlift. If you have your own transport when you land, please do say so. Say number, pilot number, blah, 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 landed safely, don't need retrieve. In any case, however, we must know that you have landed and flying has finished for you. Because again, we have safety team on standby and these people will be waiting for us to tell them that it's a good to go and everyone's safely on the ground. In case of a stopped task, uh, the deadline for a report back will be 30 minutes after the stop task. This gives you 30 minutes to land and send us a message that you're fine. Again, there will be penalties in case you fail to report back. I cannot stress this enough, so please be conscious about that. You can report back in two ways, by Telegram or SMS. Telegram is preferred. Uh, your report back message should contain your pilot number, your position if you want to be retrieved, or if you don't want to be retrieved, say that as well. Say pilot number, blah, blah, blah. I don't need retrieve. You will be sending the telegram uh, messages either in the official chat or to the following number. This is number of Dimitri Yotov, who will be our retrieve coordinator. Uh, if you're sending coordinates or locations, uh, static locations will be preferred please send the coordinates and locations after you've landed. You have not reported back successfully if you don't receive an okay message. So you report,
number, your position, your desire to be picked up or not, and Miti, Dimitri will send you a message number, this one, okay. If you receive an okay, it means your message has been re or in general, you've been marked off. If you have not received an okay message, send again a report back message in five, 10 minutes until you receive an okay message. So even if you must, even if you have your own transport, you must report back. Uh, please report back after you packed up because you will find out that our transport is fairly efficient uh, and it's not nice for everyone to wait for you to pack because you reported immediately after landing. So land, pack up, report back. Uh, and again, report even if you don't need transport. In case of an accident, God forbid, uh, if you are witnessing an accident, if you have witnessed an accident, report about the accident on the safety frequency. Uh, our safety frequency will be 146.400. It will be written on takeoff on the information board. Uh, you can try to safely land near the accident if possible. Safety here is the prime concern. If it's not possible to land to aid another pilot, don't take the risk. Uh, assess the situation, call for help. Uh, if you have landed, try to stabilize the person as much as you can if he's on a bad terrain. Uh, try to provide information regularly. Keep in contact with the radio or other means with the officials. Uh, helping. A pilot in need will not ruin your results. If you land out to help a pilot in need, you will actually be rewarded uh, for the effort with uh, a proportion of the day's task points. So, in case of an accident, assess the situation, uh, ask for permission to help uh, if the pilot uh, allows you, if the pilot that has suffered the accident allows you, if it doesn't apply the use of implied consent in cases of emergency, call for help, stabilize the situation and provide information. In case of accidents, you can contact me or the rescue coordinator on the following numbers. And again, my number and the contacts will be on the Telegram groups as well. The sample program for the days will be roughly the following. Every in the morning at nine o'clock, we'll be telling you if we're having a taskable day. Uh, and I will be giving you a very rough uh, rundown on the forecasts. Uh, we'll have detailed forecasts on takeoff. Uh, usually we'll be starting ascent on the chairlift at 9.30. For sure, tomorrow morning, we'll be uh, starting ascent on the chairlift at 9.30. However, please be at the chairlift at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning because, as I mentioned, the, the Rosin Organic Farm is providing us with nice traditional breakfast tomorrow, uh, so everyone can try it before going up. In general, however, tomorrow we're expecting a send on the chairlift to start at 9.30 uh, because of the chairlift seats, we're putting one person, one bladder on a, on a seat, and uh, usually it will take about an hour and a half to get everyone up on takeoff. Uh, so, Please be punctuate, be on time, uh, otherwise you might miss the task. Usually at 11.30 or 12, we'll be having briefing on takeoff. Competition flying will be between 12, 12.30 uh, up to about 6.30. Report deadline will be 15 minutes after the deadline for the task. Uh, and at about 5 o'clock, scoring, scoring office will be open. Scoring office probably will be open even earlier, uh, and again, there's not much of regular scoring to do. Usually the track logs from the tracking devices will be enough. You can expect provisional results around 8.30 if everything is good, going good. And at 9 o'clock on the next day, results become official. Any questions? Love it. Love it. Well, that concludes the biggest portion of the briefing. Uh, as I said, please keep everything safe. Yep. Sorry, I just have one question. So, uh, the transport's from the headquarters or do you walk to the chairlift? Uh, you have to find your way to the, to the chairlift. Okay. Uh, and uh, just, uh, yep. Can you specify what does it mean to offline? Sorry? If you cannot see the ground, you are cloud flying. If other pilots see you disappearing in the cloud, you are cloud flying. So if I am 
like let's say uh, soaring to the cloud above the base, okay? If you can prove that you sort the cloud above the base, it will be okay. But uh, bear in mind, the track logs are pretty difficult to lie. If we have uh, infringements and uh, reports for cloud flying, we'll be comparing track logs between pilots around you. So it's kind of difficult to explain how only you are sorting the cloud with everyone else around you below your height. So what's forbidden? It's not okay. It's not because it's not legal. <laughs> yeah, technically it's not legal. However, as I'm saying, it will be very difficult to prove it in any case, so I don't think that will be an issue. I know, but we'll manage it on a, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. After first task. Yeah, <laughs> after first task. Will they penalize flying in military space? Uh, no, we don't have military airspace around us. Uh, we have only the shooting range. I mean the shooting range. No, it will not be a problem. Uh, it's not an official airspace, so there will not be infringements for low pass bys, but please be mindful, just avoid it. You avoid mostly landing them. Flying low over them, we can always say that uh, we didn't saw them or something like that. I did not say that. Uh, but no, there will be no penalties for airspace over the shooting range, but don't land there. <laughs> we'll deny all knowledge. Uh, other questions in regards to the safety? Okay, I would like for your, for your attention for a little bit longer. Uh, on the competition, we'll be using uh, a scoring system developed by Daniel, which has already been successfully applied on quite a few comps. Uh, but because some pilots might not be familiar with it, I'll leave now Daniel to explain to you the scoring system and the scoring procedures. Hello everyone. Okay, first... Okay. First, uh, some intro, uh, some intro, uh, this, uh, this new scarring system only concerns, uh, concerns uh, uh, leading points. So, if you, if you are, uh, let me, uh, allow me to, to divide pilots in uh, generally three groups. Uh, first group from, from back to the front, First group is uh, pilots with not a lot of experience uh, or slow pilots, pilots will, with uh, lower uh, class wings. So they, uh, those, if you, if you fall in this category, uh, you're, uh, you are almost not concerned uh, by how many real points, uh, uh, how many leading points you will have. You most probably, you won't have any leading points. And your ultimate goal is, uh, is and will be to finish the task. So uh, uh, even if you flying slow, you just uh, not not give up. Try to try to stay in the air and finish the task, and that's it. This will be uh, your uh, your goal in in this competition. Uh, next, intermediate pilots, pilots with better wings, with more experience. Uh, th these pilots most probably will close uh, all of the tasks, or most of them. Uh, I consider myself in this group. And uh, my, my main concern is, of course, to finish the task, first of all. And then, if I can finish it, to finish it fast, fast enough. And to, of course, get good proportion of the concern will be slightly towards uh, my my flying tactics will be slightly towards this uh, uh, this idea to to gain more leading points as much as i can and finally the top pilots the fast pilots with with the top wings <laughs> they uh, they finish each task uh, which is possible to be finished, of course, and they finish the tasks fast enough. Uh, sometimes the difference in the, in the times are in seconds between those pilots. So what will uh, what will affect them? 
those pilots most is leading points because they always have almost similar amount of time points. They, they have full... Um, can you hear me well? Okay. They always have full distance points. They always have almost all of the time points and the difference will be in the leading points. So, uh, we designed with, with this guy, <laughs> you know him very well, we designed a system that solves one big problem nowadays in uh, most of the uh, high category competitions. The, these problems are visible, are evident in, in all World Cups, in all uh, Category 1 competitions, and basically in all high category competitions, uh, high, high profile competitions like Monte Grappa, uh, and competitions like this, French Open, and <laughs> yeah. the, the problem is that uh, when, when you, uh, with the old system, when you fly uh, in the leading group, you gain leading points, uh, but maybe you, you won't deserve them. You, you can just fly behind the, the leaders and you also gaining leading points. And this is really a uh, safe tactic, safe ta uh, tactical wise, it, it re it, this is really a safe kind of flying because you, you uh, always get a big proportion of the list. We, we didn't like to see something like this. All pilots, all pilots from the competition, like a one big train, all flying in the same route. We want more like this. And uh, the idea of the real leading points is uh, the, the scoring system can calculate how much time you are in leading position. And you are in leading position if you don't have anyone in front of you. Uh, if in your cone, uh, imagine you are uh, flying in, in one direction, in one, uh, along one 3D vector, and if uh, if in this comb there is no one else from the competition, you are leading. If not, you are not leading. This is simple. <clears throat> the comb, uh, actually there are two cones, one bigger, one smaller, and uh, uh, between the two cones there is some kind of gray zone. So uh, the, the leading time is partial, not, not black and white, but uh, there is a black zone. Uh, there is a gray zone, partial zone, and there is white zone. Uh, if uh, there is no one in the, in the bigger cone, so you are leading in this case. <clears throat> this is the, the, uh, the schematic of the calculations. Uh, I'm not getting into the details, but uh, the, traditional, um, the traditional progress calculation uh, meaning uh, on what time, how far in front of the task, uh, what percentage of the task you, you passed. This is also works. And uh, this is combined with your calculated leading time. You will see this in the scoring sheet, uh, in the scoring table. You, uh, uh, every pilot will get uh, some leading percentage. And uh, this leading percentage, uh, or this leading uh, part, is uh, multiplied by your progress part, and this gives you the leading points. So, uh, the, uh, of course, you, you will ask, what is the strategy? What, what should I do to, to get more leading points? This is simple. Just try to minimize your flying after someone else. This is that simple. Can we get normal not to follow someone? Not to follow someone. Yes, yes, exactly. Don't follow someone. If, uh, if you are in the thermal, so you are gaining height, uh, your movement vector is up, 
then all this calculation is turned off. So when you thermolink, uh, this time doesn't count neither as leaving time, neither as following time. But once you go on glide, then this calculation is applied. So you're, if you are alone in front, you are leading. Your total time and leading time count. Every second counts. And if you are behind someone, only the total time counts and your leading time is less. So uh, once, once uh, more, uh, this, uh, these uh, considerations are mostly for the top pilots, mostly for the pilots who can, can be sure that they will finish the task, they will finish it uh, among the first, and uh, they should be careful uh, about how to fly, how, uh, who they follow, how to choose and pick routes along the task, and so on. If you are far behind, you can disregard this. Um, maybe if you are two or three groups behind the first, it already doesn't concern you. Definitely, if you are on the third or the fourth group, then uh, just uh, fly for speed. So, so this, one, this, one, this one still applies for the first group, just for everyone? Yes, applies for everybody. This yeah. applies for everybody. So uh, if, you, if you are first leader, if you are the leader in the second group, it, it benefits you. Oh, okay, so, so you can, so, be, you, can mm -hmm. you can benefit uh, when you uh, yes. like uh, pull the second group, you still get points. Uh, yes. Dimensions of the console. Dimensions uh, are currently the the black zone angle is forty five degrees, black zone radius seven hundred fifty meters, gray zone angle is sixty degrees, gray zone radius is uh, three thousand meters. Three kilometers. This is the this is the uh, the distance uh, we with Yasin discussed a lot of this, and we also discussed a lot uh, of the parameters with the the they Serbian pilots fly with this system for three years already. We fly with this system four years already. Can you go about the normal leading point? Pardon? Can we vote about your normal leading points? <laughs> no, this is already decided. It's only on your competition, right? No, no, I, I, will, yes. I will tell you. It's on other competition? Yes. Where? This is short history of the development of this system. Uh, sorry, where is this user? Oh, sorry. And this is uh, where it, it's used uh, from, from uh, four years already. We, we use this uh, in all competitions. Serbians, Serbian pilots use this uh, from uh, 2020 until now. All Serbian league competitions are with this system. And uh, uh, every year uh, we, we have more and more competitions with, uh, uh, made by this system. This year um, Slovenian and Croatian Open was also by this system. It was uh, 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 one, uh, the, the competition was won by Tilen Ceglar, but I still don't have uh, any feedback from them. Serbians love it, they like it very much, and uh, this year uh, there is uh, one upcoming competition, the Santna Dervar, uh, which is uh, CIVL sponsored. Uh, CIVL put some effort to, to make the competition, uh, uh, to, to, to sponsor the competition and to attract uh, more better understanding how it works and uh, to have uh, more pilots to see it, to try it, and uh, to, to get more feedback. So, so far, uh, until now, this is the biggest competition ever made with this system. We are now uh, 
almost 90 pilots, 85 pilots, something like this. Uh, and if you have questions, Uh, black zone is 750 meters. Uh, a, gray. It's this radius, right? No, no, no. no. Or is this uh, uh, the black zone is from you, 70, uh, 750 meters in front of you. Okay. Gray zone is 3,000 meters. All right. Three kilometers. No, 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 it's not proportional, it's a standard uh, d distribution, uh, like always. Yeah, if if you have uh, some uh, some situation that you have to follow someone, so you you do it. Just push the speed system, go to to his place, and start thermaling. If you see there is a thermal, so if you if you are uh, confident that there will be climb and so on, so you you will uh, have slightly uh, you will have some some uh, small part some seconds or minutes with uh, with uh, without leading but then you gain height and then you can continue the task okay so if i need the half of the distance of the cone after the first one i'm getting just half of leading point uh, actually it's like this If you are, if you are here, uh, okay, no, if you are here, and if you have here some pilots, your uh, leading time will be half, approximately. Here will be almost zero. Here will be almost one. But uh, you rem remember that this this distance is seven seven hundred fifty. And this distance to here is 3,000. So the gray zone is big. The gray zone is a lot bigger than the, the black zone. Yeah, the calculation is difficult, but uh, we, we managed to do it. Just, just don't, yeah, just minimize your flying after someone else. That, that's it. Yeah, you, you should try. Uh, this, mm, this system, this system is specifically targeted to to prevent uh, to prevent uh, just flying behind the best guys and still having good results. The, this is the the goal of this system. Of course, of course. If you if you don't have the best glider, otherwise you won't be able to do it. Regardless of the system. Uh, just want to get the attention of everyone. One, just for a second, guys. Decide is a task committee for tomorrow. Uh, so for the task committee, I would recommend to have. 
three pilots and I will reserve myself the space of a control organ. I can be suggesting the tasks, uh, but I would need three experienced pilots for a task committee. Uh, and I also recommend to choose a safety committee of at least three pilots. I would prefer the more safe ones for that. We'll just confirm the safety of our task. So, do you have uh, any first volunteers for a task committee? I would actually recommend one of the Bulgarian pilots, Valery Tsvetanov, who's a local and knows the area very well. Uh, Valery? So, here's Valery. He's one of our local pilots, and I think he can be one of the task committee, so I will be happy to have two more pilots. Any of the Czech teams is probably the Czech presence is the biggest. Any volunteers for the task committee? If you're too shy, I'm gonna choose some people on random. <laughs> Norton? Do you have suggestions for task committee? Yes. Okay, we get standard in. Okay, I was thinking about Peter as well. I don't see Peter, but uh, we'll notify him that he's in the task committee. And do you? Okay, they know. And do we have a suggestion for the safety committee? I actually suggest you for the safety committee as well. N name two more safe pilots. Yes, yes. I, I said Daniel. I'll actually recommend Vesco. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll recommend you, Vomarko, then for safety committee. <laughs> okay, and a robot for safety committee. Perfect, then. We have our committees. Thank you for that. Okay, if you don't have any questions, go have dinner. And small party. Thank you.